Hey everybody, and welcome back to FSI DFS. I am McKinley 412. I am one of the MLB coaches here at FSI alongside Meg Roller. Uh, big shout out to Meg Roller to start off the video. I just heard the take in the last week as I was out, but I am back. Uh, we got a nice slate, uh, 10 game slate that we're going to be paying attention to tonight. A lot of weather that we do have to be paying attention to, though. Um, I'm not going to go through every single game, but I think of the 10 games, there's like five or six of them that have minor at least minor risk to them so i'm maybe some delays happen tonight i'm not expecting any postponements at all uh but still delays can really impact your starting pitching decisions uh so please be paying attention to that as the day goes on kind of broke them up into tiers as we always do uh just with the salaries uh top tier mid tier cheap tier for the pitchers and then some fade so we'll kind of go through that uh, and then we'll kind of talk about a cash build, possibly a GPP build, possibly uh, those are not the official cash for GPP builds, uh, but just kind of like steering you in a direction that you could go uh, if you want to. So four top pitchers, Cease, Cole, Gonsolin, and Musgrove. I mean, that's a great four, uh, top four to have, honestly. Cease is number one, going up against Detroit. Detroit against right-handed pitching struggles so mightily. Uh, and I just love the upside and the strikeout potential that Cease can bring. Um, has he faced them yet this season? Yes. Two, look at that, twice uh, for 2060 key points on average. So he absolutely mows Detroit down. I think this is one of the games that is in one of the uh, more rain-concerned games. Uh, so make sure you're paying attention to that as we get closer to lock. Please, uh, I just can't stress that enough. Garrett Cole, uh, he's got a tougher matchup going up against Boston, but still, this is Garrett Cole. We know what he's able to do. We know of his strikeout rate. We know of his ceiling. However, he can still have his, you know, kind of yikes sort of games. We saw it uh, right after they banned the spider attack. I mean, we've seen it even so far this season. Um, negative 8.8 just kind of scribbled in there, a 2.2. So he can struggle at times, um, but for the most part, Solid pitcher. Cease, number one. Um, Musgrove and Gonsolin. Gonsolin, I put ahead of him. Um, Cubs against righties, actually not too bad. Uh, but Gonsolin is just very consistent. He's just a consistent pitcher. You can kind of see all throughout the entire season. He's just consistent. He's going to limit damage. He's not going to allow a whole lot of earned runs. Look at this. He's allowed two or fewer earned runs in every single start uh, so far this season. He's 10-0 and 0 for a reason. He's got a 1.54 ERA. Um, and that's why I have him ahead of Musgrove. You could even put him against ahead of Cole if you really want to. Uh, but Musgrove kind of rounding things out uh, just with the ceiling, his upside um, going up against San Francisco. In the mid tier, uh, I ranked him Strider, Webb, Gonzalez, and then Winkowski. Winkowski is more of a GPP play for sure. Uh, it's just, I kind of put him in just to kind of fill in a box. I guess I probably shouldn't do that. Uh, but Winkowski is more of a GPP play going up against the Yankees. Uh, Strider's the number one guy. If he can have one of his, his better games, as you can kind of see what his better games are, uh, he is a fantastic play. It wouldn't shock me if he is a chalky, uh, like, SP2 play in cash. You know, throw in, like, Cease and Strider as your one-two punch uh, for pitchers. Wouldn't shock me at all. Um, after him, I got Logan Webb going up against San Diego. Webb. Fine play. Uh, he's not going to get you 30, 35 DK points. He did against KC, but he's not going to do it against San Diego here. Um, I still prefer Strider over Webb. And then I got Gonzalez going up against Toronto. Gonzalez and Winkowski, again, they're more GPP plays than anything. If I'm really picking a guy from this top or this mid tier, it's going to be Strider for sure. And then the cheap tier, Lyles up at the top. The Angels strike out a ton against right-handed pitching, especially in the past month. In the past uh, 30 days against right-handed pitching, they have a team strikeout rate over 30%, which is just insane uh, if you can get an entire team striking out at that rate. So Lyles, he can easily get you, you know, that upper six, seven, eight uh, strikeout game at just 6.9 DK. He certainly, certainly can pay off that salary tag. He can really open up salary for you as well um, with just that 6.9 uh, tag. Silseth and then Lighter kind of rounding things, out, rounding things out. I got Silseth going up against Baltimore. He's shown flashes of brilliance, um, but he did get sent back down to double A ball and then they brought it back up to face against uh, the White Sox. Now he gets to go again. 
easy matchup. That's pretty much one of the reasons why I have him going here. And then later, uh, this is a GPP only going up against Detroit, Detroit, the Dodgers. Uh, but I just like lighter as a pitcher uh, and just what he can bring to the table uh, for sure. So, but he's not going to go super deep into the games. That's your main concern with him. That's why he is GPP only and going up against the Dodgers. You guys see the fates there. Uh, so yeah, so that's kind of the pitching route. Um, top tier uh, for bats. It's going to be Atlanta going up against uh, Liberator. Atlanta just does fantastic against left-handed pitching. Atlanta in general is just on an offensive tear at the moment. And they got some pretty decent plays. Um, Acuna for sure. Riley for sure. Uh, Duvall, if he's back at 3.1K, I think that's a steal. Absolutely love him there. Uh, Contreras, if he's in over Darno, absolutely love him as well. Uh, so I feel like if you're going to do an Atlanta stack, that could be a great four-person start. Um Let's see. Let's just throw in some pitchers. Let's throw in C. So we'll throw in Strider and kind of see where we're at. 3.4K. I mean, that's totally doable, especially because I think one of the favorite plays on the slate uh, in terms of value is going to be on Arizona. And it's going to be uh, Liplo here. 2.5K. He could be leading off righty going up against the lefty Gomber. Um, and he mashes left handed pitching. He's got fantastic numbers against them. Uh, so it wouldn't shock me if he's like a chalky play, even as just a one off. Uh, but look, at you're at 3.7K remaining. You can pair him, boom, Walker. Still 3.7. Walker's got great numbers against lefties. Now you're kind of seeing an entire line almost. Um, we won't go any farther. But, yeah, I mean, you can see you can easily get, like, two stud pitchers and the stud bats in there uh, without really any concern because Arizona is a fantastic cheap play. Dodgers uh, going up against Slater. I know I mentioned I kind of like him, but, you know, he's not going to go super deep into the game, so maybe they can get to that Chicago bullpen. Colorado uh, going up against Keiko. Keiko is just in a disaster mode right now. I think he has, let's see, the games, yeah, six earned runs, four, six, six. He is really, really struggling. Now he's got Colorado again. Granted, it is in Arizona this time, uh, but he is struggling mightily. His walk rate is up, um, not very good. So I would love Colorado for sure. And this is the team that you could uh, pair with the Yankees uh, that I've kind of found. So you're going to kind of be choosing between Cron and Rizzo. If Rizzo is back, we'll just throw in Rizzo. I'll feel other Yankees bats. Uh, I'd be Judge and Stanton. So like Judge, Stanton, and Rizzo, I think would be your primary three that you would be building around. And then just kind of like fill things in from there. I mean, you could fill in uh, with Josh Donaldson. You're probably going to go cheap at catcher. Um, Brendan Rodgers is fine. Uh, I don't want to give a whole lineup again, but let's just see. If you throw in Lyles, who could have some strikeout upside, um, you're at 4.7 remaining, throw in Cease, 3K remaining. You go cheap at catcher, you could easily fill in, you know, shortstop and outfield, even with these top Yankee bats. Um, I guess I don't have many Colorado bats in here, um, but you could you could fill them in for sure. Maybe you go up to Cron instead of Rizzo. Um, but yeah, so Colorado, absolutely love them. That's going up against Miami. There's a fine play. They have a higher implied run total. Um, Vegas seems to really like them here. So uh, they're expensive. That's kind of like the one main thing. That's kind of why it's pushing them down the list. Yankees, uh, top GPP play, as I mentioned. Cincinnati, I love them going up against uh, Bryce Wilson. One other thing to note over here, uh, Toronto, at the time of this recording, Toronto and Cincinnati, I don't exactly know their starting pitchers. They are still to be determined. DK has some probables in here, but the MLB.com, the MLB app, uh, they all say to be determined. So I kind of trust the MLB site first uh, and then DK. So that's pretty much rounding everything out. Uh, it's a pretty nice slate, in my opinion. Lots of different ways to go. I think pitching, I'm going to be spending up. Uh, Lyles is as cheap as I will go. Uh, and even that, I'm probably not going to have a whole lot of shares of him. Uh, but I'm going to be sticking with these top four and then kind of Strider um, as far as my builds go. So I kind of round things out. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. Good luck in your contests, and we will see you in the next video.